The first question is about, uh, under our theme, mission and older people, is about the words older people. I want you to tell us, uh, Ian, from your particular perspective and role, what this description means to you. Part of it also is celebrating the fact that we are growing older and that people are living to a greater age and that doesn't stop us from contributing to society in general and that might not be because we are wonderful riding a bike and it's active aging but there's a spiritual element to us growing older a time for reflection that is also important but I think from what colleagues have said it's very much about maintaining people's identity we don't want to stop being Sandra or Ian. We want to retain that. And so the spiritual dimension is really important. And I think when we went to William Wood today, there was a wonderful example of making sure that people remember that you don't start off being old with an incapacity. So on the doors, when you look at people's history in a snapshot of photographs or little elements of who they are that's really a huge element of your spiritual being and your faith is part of that and what we want to do is to make sure that that element isn't lost that care home staff cross streets i hope excluded actually recognize that that is you're dealing with an individual who has these elements, whether it's faith, whether it's music, or whatever it is, and we need to celebrate that um, much more closely. So I think I would agree with all this. My question is, we talk about adults, and then we're suddenly old. Why don't we remain adults? Um, and I think it's arbitrary, and it's based on assumptions which we really need to challenge. From your perspective and role, what does, what does mission mean when you put it alongside the words older people? Would you like to launch us on in that? I mean, the emphasis of faith in older people is around the importance of the spiritual dimension, whether, as I said, whether that's a faith or not. And I, th I think this is about enabling people to, to build a resilience to the things that come to them, whether it's through um, bereavement or whether it's through loss of health or loss of independence in different ways from, from work. And one of the things, a couple of things struck me from the report was um, the importance of building confidence. And I think we've learned quite a lot today about being confident to support people who maybe have conditions that we don't quite know what to do with. And a lot of the work that Faith and Older People does is with pastoral carers um, in their own home about understanding dementia, looking at practical tools, looking at practical um, issues that, that can come together. But with care home staff who perhaps don't come from a faith background or really acknowledge spiritual values, um, it's helping them to see how important that is. So there's a learning that I think runs through all the um, inputs we've had already today that's you know really important so confidence and learning but our main thing is about supporting the values that people have held throughout their lives so that they don't get lost um, because they suddenly become the person who is being cared for in room 28 on corridor one that's really what we don't want we also want to ensure that there's a confidence in congregations so that those who care, those who have been bereaved, are still welcomed. I'm astonished sometimes that we aren't as good at this as we ought to be. And a lot of the work done around good life, good death, good grief highlights that we are very shy of this. We don't like these conversations, whether it's end of life, whether it's illness. And we do need to have the confidence and the support from each other in order to tackle these issues. I mean, the emphasis of faith in older people is around the importance of the spiritual dimension, whether, as I said, whether that's a faith or not. And I, th I think this is about enabling people to, to build a resilience to the things that come to them, whether it's through um, bereavement or whether it's through loss of health or loss of independence in different ways from, from work. And one of the things a couple of things struck me from the report was um, the importance of building confidence. 
And I think we've learned quite a lot today about being confident to support people who maybe have conditions that we don't quite know what to do with. And a lot of the work that Faith and Older People does is with pastoral carers um, in their own home about understanding dementia, looking at practical tools, looking at practical um, issues that, that can come together. But with care home staff who perhaps don't come from a faith background or really acknowledge spiritual values, um, it's helping them to see how important that is. So there's a learning that I think runs through all the um, inputs we've had already today that's you know, really important. So confidence and learning. But our main thing is about supporting the values that people have held throughout their lives so that they don't get lost um, because they suddenly become the person who is being cared for in room 28 on corridor one. That's really what we don't want. We also want to ensure that there's a confidence in congregations so that those who care, those who have been bereaved, are still welcomed. I'm astonished sometimes that we aren't as good at this as we ought to be. And a lot of the work done around good life, good death, good grief highlights that we are very shy of this. We don't like these conversations, whether it's end of life, whether it's illness. And we do need to have the confidence and the support from each other in order to tackle these issues. Thinking of, of where you come from um, this morning, um, what does you as a parish minister, what do others in their role distinctly offer so that people would look to you in terms of mission and older people? Thank you. I mean, I'd like to emphasise that um, a lot of the work we do is very collaborative. So we depend very much on um, goodwill within the Church of Scotland and have worked a lot with Ian over the, the years um, in terms of um, events that we've done about a number of the things that you have raised um, to do with understanding the nature of you know, spiritual care, the spiritual journey, but also end of life issues. And more recently, those connections between um, the parish church and um, care homes. So it's the outreach element that is very strong um, that we look to. What we particularly offer, I think, is trying to build that confidence. Um, and we've done quite a lot of work with different congregations around dementia. So I see there a real partnership could develop between FIOP and Crossreach. We are not a dementia-based organization. So what we do is harness people's experience and use it to best advantage. So that's a key thing. But what we want to make sure is that if you, as a parish minister, go to a care home, which isn't Crossreach, that there is a welcome and an understanding about why you are important to the residents, that it's for them. It's, and you know, if you have um, staff that are not of faith, that they understand that faith is important for other people. And so that's a critical part of what we want to do, as well as acknowledging the, the wider aspects of, of spiritual care. So it's, it's the roundness that we want to develop, and we can only do that by working closely with other um, organisations, because we all bring a perspective and a skill to developing this work. And Maureen, just before we pass on, do you have a, a website? Do you have any resources that people, if they're not aware of faith and older people, could draw from? We have a website, which is www.faithinolderpeople.org.uk. Um, and we have a number of resources on it. And we've just started being running a blog. Um, so, and even Twitter. <laughs> so we're, we're moving on. Great. What support do you look to from others to help you to be part of Mission and Older People? When I wrote the first business plan for um, Faith in Older People, I put, we need to form a, a forum of all denominations and also bring in other faiths. And it's been incredibly difficult to actually do. But I think that it's a really important thing. And one of the things that we've learned going around the country, talking about people's work um, with, with um, congregations, is actually the chance to talk to each other. And we learn a great deal from just talking to each other, seeing what initiatives have taken place, what's been difficult and what are the, the, the mutual things. So I think that's a challenge that we should really take up um, because I think there's merit in it. 
Um, and there's a whole raft of issues that we could take forward very positively. Certainly from the experience in FIOP, working collaboratively has been the only way we can exist with two halves of us for most of the time. Um, and we now have three halves, which is a distinct improvement. Um, but there's a lot of challenges. But what we've done is brought in other people's experience. And I look at Callum and I look at Sheila, who I work on a different, totally different thing. But it's connected with about isolation and poverty amongst older people. So we have lots of connections. We need to join the dots. So I think there's a big challenge there for us. What, what is the, the one message, perhaps out of what we've said, or you've just been saying, I've really been wanting to say this for an awful long time, that you would like to say? I would like to see us form a collaborative um, forum to between denominations to take this forward. 